Hello, everyone, and welcome to Stuck in the Catch Fence. This is the weekly show. My name's Ryan Peters. I'm joined by my two co-hosts. One is Joe Spillman, and the other one is Steve Risley. Gentlemen, we did a show a couple days ago talking about the possibility and the foreshadowing of what could happen when it comes to Hendrick. And let's just go ahead and dive right into that right now because, well, we thought the hammer could be coming down, and NASCAR said we indeed are going to bring the hammer down. And, and not to beat what we've already said before, but kind of let's get our analysis on what has happened and moving forward, the ramifications. to The level two penalties did come down. So the 9, 48, 24, and 5 all lost 100 owner's points. They all were fined $100,000 apiece. They all lost 10 playoff points. So essentially, William Byron's two wins have been erased. And they will lose their crew chiefs for the next four weeks. Starting this week, because even though they will appeal, Hendrick will also still suspend their crew chiefs. So I thought that was interesting. And... The only actually the nine car did not lose a hundred drivers points. They only lost a hundred owners points because Chase Elliott is not driving right now, and I guess they felt like Josh Berry is not permanent, so they didn't give him the hundred points. Um, and but it was only, it was only ten points. Well, the hundred driver points, not the ten no, playoff was, points. Oh, they took a hundred driver points and that then ten only, playoff. That, points. Okay, I don't, I don't know. Hundred owner, hundred driver, and then ten playoff. Okay. So we will get into that. And the way that I'm going to show you that first on what that looks like, because typically we start off every show looking at the, the driver standings. So we will do that right now. And to give you kind of a quick understanding, Alex Bowman was in first place on the driver standings. He is no longer. Also, colleague Justin Haley was given the same fine. And all of the drivers for Hendrick, Alex Bowman is now in 23rd. Chase Elliott is in 26th because he hasn't been racing. <laughs> William Byron's in 29th, and Kyle Larson is in 32nd. And I want to congratulate the three of us because, guys, we have done something not ever accomplished on this show. We are 40 points higher than Justin Haley, who currently sits at negative 40 points. Yeah. <laughs> points. So, guys, we did it. We did it. How, how do you like Chase Elliott, second in points for Hendrick, and not even raced? It, it, it's, it's good to be the golden, the prodigal son. Yeah, so I guess a good – if there's a good time to break your leg, I guess it's when they get the lures. Chase just figured it out. <laughs> so that is currently where we sit. So Kevin Harvick <laughs> gains the most out of that, now currently in first place. And just to kind of wrap it up, the process of how this happened real quick, because we did mention this, and then we're going to go straight into your guys' analysis. They got the truck off the hauler, and there was, after 45 minutes, a voluntary inspection. And that's what where- where the voluntary inspection happened, and that's where NASCAR saw the louvers and decided to confiscate them. They did not race with those louvers. Obviously, Hendrick Sport Motorsports did not have a problem without those louvers during the race, but it was during that voluntary inspection that this happened. So a quick analysis. I think this is what we talked about, what we were expecting. Do you have any initial analysis, Joe, based upon what NASCAR has handed down? No, I, I think it really is par for the course. We last night, uh, two nights ago, whenever we got on and, and talked about this, which, by the way, uh, I do want to say, I think we're the only YouTube channel talking about these penalties uh, and pretty much accurately predicting them um, when we got on. But I think it's pretty much par for the course of what we saw with Kozlowski last year. However, I will say this, and I said this the other night or last night, that even though these penalties sound severe, they're really not. Because at the end of the day, unlike Keselowski last year, who could have got a win and still been outside the threshold of, of making the playoffs, these guys get a win this year, they're essentially in, unless we have more than 16 winners. So I don't know that that the penalty is as bad as what Keselowski received last year, even though it's the same penalty, essentially. So uh, I think NASCAR... Joe, to, what, to caveat that just a little bit, the playoff points that William Byron lost, they reset every round. 
So those 10 points that he had, he would have automatically started round one with those 10 points. Right. No, I, I get that. Yeah. So I'm just, but I'm just saying that for the people, it's a confusing system when right. it comes to playoff points. So he loses that ability to have those every right. single round. Right. Yeah. I don't so, mean to, you know, I think what Joe's trying to say, the playoff points are a lot bigger of a penalty. The 10 playoff points are a bigger penalty than the hundred regular season points. Those mean nothing. Right. right, Joe. Is that right? Because like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the yeah. playoffs. So sorry, Joe. I just wanted to clear right. up for the audience because it's a very com- confusing so, system on that. Well, Ryan, and, it was clear to Joe and I. And and, and I think though, Kaslowski, when he was penalized last year, didn't even have any playoff points yet. I don't think. I don't think. He no, was it was after this race. It was after the Atlanta race when he. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he. Dude. I don't think he had any any uh, stage wins or or scored any points in any of the stages. So. And obviously he didn't have a win, but yeah, you're right. The playoff points are huge. And that's a, that's a whole other topic because essentially you build up enough playoff points. You basically get a buy the first round, uh, you know? Yeah. So, carry chase for yeah. two rounds until they got to tell exactly. at least two rounds. I think it carried chase into the finals. It, it may have. Yeah. Cause he did not have a good playoff last year. Right. But so, he had those sorry. points. So sorry to cut you off, Joe. Did, did yeah. you have anything else to no, add? No, no, that, that's that's really my that? yeah. That, that's my synopsis of it. I mean, really, there's not other than knowing what the actual penalty is. I mean, we were pretty much on par last night when we came out and talked about it. So really, my my opinion hasn't really changed of of what we put out last night. Okay, and Steve. Yeah, I I can't add much to what Joe said. I mean, he pretty well said it exactly right. The only thing I'll add is. The 100 points do come into play toward the end of the year because they do award playoff points to the top 10 finishers in the yep. points at the end of the year. Chase Elliott got 15 points last year, playoff points, for winning the regular season championship. So they, they will make a little bit of a difference at the end of the year. But as Joe said, it doesn't matter because points don't are not a qualifier to get in the in the uh, in the playoffs just to win, right? So, right. but 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 those hundred points might bite somebody in the butt um, down the road, and probably not a Hendrick Carr, yeah, because we already saw the dominance they had even after they put the regular louvers back in, they still dominated the race right. with all four cars finishing in the top ten, and I'm sure we'll get to that. So, well, Joe, yeah. Joe said all yeah. we can say. And la- last year, this penalty was a death sentence for Kaslowski. Right, he, it was. He had, he had no chance after this penalty. Uh, right. The Hendrick drivers aren't aren't really looking at anything but making up their playoff points. And really, the only person that was hugely affected was by that was William Byer. And I know Kyle Larson had a couple because uh, I think he had a couple stage wins, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, you know, I think they just move on for this. And by the end of the season, this will be a forgotten thing. Well, two things. They're not moving on just yet because they did appeal it. So, and they put out a huge statement and we'll get into that in just a second. Uh, my other topic or my other thing is Steve did not say one thing about my Mark Martin background. And that kind of makes me very sad. Oh, no, I've noticed it. Yeah. But, but you didn't have... say, Steve, whatever you said in your mind did not reach my ears and that hurt my heart. So, oh, I actually have a die cast of that exact car. It's a beautiful car. Only it says Pfizer on it or Viagra, one of the two. But he ran the Babbling. No, he ran the Babbling Colors with the Pfizer car. And I have uh, one of those 124 um, the die cast of that. I'll bring it out for the next race. Yep. So maybe I'll mail it to you. That'll be a drive through penalty for Steve. Um, yeah. Oh, for not mentioning it? Uh, too slow on pit road, actually. So, but the, again, you know, I, I thought the interesting thing was, and let me just, and what I'm sure you're going to talk about later. The interesting thing was uh, Hendrick chose not to appeal the absence of the pit crew uh, chiefs. Yes. And I'm sure you're going to talk about that. So Which, we'll, it, go ahead. I, I don't really, yeah, we'll get to that. But the only thing that this does, again, it hurts, especially William Byron, who had two wins advancing to the next opportunity in, in the, excuse me, in the playoffs. So the next round of the playoffs, like Chase Elliott built up that capital. He no longer has that capital. He essentially has to win every time he gets into the playoffs now, unless he ends up winning three or four more races and then makes up that difference. And the 100 points almost guarantees no way Hendrick Carr can win the regular season because they are so far down putting themselves in that hole. The nine car can. It won't, though. 
uh, <laughs> without any points the last next four races, that's a lot. I mean, you're talking driver points, not playoff points. So yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, he's getting zero each week. So, right. I mean, it's going to be tough for that. Right. Um, and I, I do want to give a shout out. A, a good breakdown of this is done by a fellow YouTuber, Eric Eastup. He does a great job being on the news in NASCAR. Um, you know, listening to him kind of helped, you know, get some of this information as it was coming out. So I do want to give a shout out to him. He's been a great source in this NASCAR community. But I do want to get to what Rick Hendrick Motorsports or Hendrick Motorsports did post about the reason why that they are not letting this be uh, finished. And that's because, oh my God, everything just went haywire. Sorry. I'll get to it in just a second. Oh, well, maybe. Huh. The hell with it. I tried. So, okay. While sorry, you're technology looking, can I ask failed. you a question, Ryan? Did Ty kind of do this? And Joe yeah. certainly should. Should the drivers be penalized points? They had nothing to do with this. I well, mean, we, they, they, I don't, they, they we, don't work on these cars. They don't know what louvers are in these cars. Right. They go out and drive the damn car. I mean, here Chase Elliott's not. Why is Chase Elliott not penalized like the other three drivers? Because uh, he I mean, was not at Phoenix. But it, that is the only reason. But why. none of the. Do you really think any of the drivers knew? Well, I, yeah. I, I said this last night and, and okay. I talked about, you know, drivers being penalized and then not really knowing, but I think that's the standard. I think that's the standard. Yeah. I mean, you had an argument with RFK last year and Keselowski, um, you know, being part owner of that team. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, we, we talked about this the other night or last night, whenever we talked about this um, and did our live show, they have to maintain the standard and the precedent that was already set. And that's exactly what they did. I, I, you know, other than um, when I talked about the information that I think NASCAR needs to put out, and I think NASCAR does need to do a better job. Ryan, you said it was the media, but I think the source has to come from NASCAR as to why this is such a big deal, other than they were told, don't mess with that single source part that we give you. And and yeah. I would like to know what, what advantage does NASCAR really believe that altering these louvers gave the Hendrick cars? Because from what I saw, I, and I'm repeating myself, they didn't make a damn bit of difference when they got out there on the track this past weekend. So um, I, I think NASCAR made the right decision. I was going to be upset if it came out that parts were altered and and Hendrick wasn't penalized like they were and the drivers weren't penalized like, like they were because then it would have looked like NASCAR was playing favorites with Hendrick. Uh, they stayed on the same level. They, they It's par for the course, and, and I at least uh, – applaud NASCAR for doing what they should have done. Yeah. And the only thing I'll add to what you say, you're right. Um, the, the example of how much involvement drivers have in prep of the car, you know, the crews down there Thursday working on the car, the uh, in, into Las Vegas and chase breaks his leg on Saturday. Uh, so he's not yeah. even down there. You know, he, he's putzing around with his family in Colorado um, and so I don't, I think docking the drivers at points may be a little excessive. Um, well, well I don't, my opinion, I don't think they could Move go on. beyond Phoenix. I mean, the, the, the inspection was done at Phoenix. I think that's the only race they could really call into question. I, I don't think they could say that this has been going on all season. You got yeah. caught with your hand in the cookie jar at Phoenix. That's, that's what it applies to. And obviously yeah. Elliot wasn't there or part of that, nor was he the previous week. But, you know, at, right. at the end of the day, even even if he if Chase Elliott had altered louvers in the first two races, it really can't apply to them because NASCAR didn't catch it in the first two races. Yeah. Go ahead. Brian. Yeah, I think I'm the sorry. only reason that why NASCAR has to penalize the drivers because they have the most to gain, whether they had a hand in it or not. They're the one that could have won the race at the end of the day because of an altered part and they're the one that gets the recognition for it. And if they want to race and knock somebody else out because of it, I think that that's why you have to punish the driver because at the end of the day, they're the one controlling the vehicle, whether they altered the vehicle themselves, they're the one controlling the vehicle. They are the face of, of the six, the nine, the enter whatever car it may be. And you can't 
in my opinion, you can't, no matter what happens, even though it's an organization standpoint, I mean, did the crew chief alter it? I mean, he's not an engineer. Did you know? So why is the crew chief suspended? There's all kinds of different things. I think the way NASCAR looks at it is every single person in this process is going to get penalized. The crew chief got penalized. The organization got fined and the driver got penalized. And it's just a way of saying we made this black and white. Don't mess with it. And there's hefty fines. So that. Now, this is what I was trying to get to a second ago and share with you guys the statement from Hendrick Motorsports, why they are going to appeal this. Um, so there's the voluntary inspection 35 minutes after, you know, getting to the garage prior to any on-track activity. Um, they made it sound like there wasn't any communication that they were going to take it, but then they still ended up taking it anyway. So the reason why they are appealing it is because the lures provided to the teams through NASCAR's mandated single source supplier did not match the design submitted by the manufacturers and approved by NASCAR. I think we understand that because Denny Hamlin said that, yes, they're having an issue with it, and therefore NASCAR made the statement, don't alter it. So then, and this is where things kind of get confusing to me, it says documented inconsistent and unclear communication by the sanctioned and body specifically related to louvers. So my guess is if we're going to play uh, people's court again, Hendrick Motorsports said, this product that you've given us sucks. It does not work. It is not put in there properly. And it has a huge effect when it comes to the downforce of our car. If we cannot work with these because this is not a great product, we're going to send in documentation. Are we allowed to alter this? Now, if you remember the Brandon Brown situation, this is kind of where things can get hairy, where it's he said, she said. Brandon Brown was told that he was allowed to run Let's Go Brandon cryptocurrency. He said he had the approval from NASCAR. He, he had proof of it, and he went with it. There could have been somebody, if I'm playing devil's advocate, that from NASCAR said, yeah, you're right. Those aren't fitting. Alter it in whatever way makes it possible. That's going to be Hendrick's, I think, best bet for this to not for this appeal to work. I don't think the appeal is going to work, but I think this is their best bet is saying, Hey, your communication line, we got told it was okay to alter this. So we did, but then you, you know, came back to us. And then the other, and this is maybe something you guys want to hit it on recent comparable penalties issued by NASCAR have been related to issues discovering during post race inspection. I don't think that they're going to get away with this because it says, do not alter the part. Doesn't matter if we find it pre-race post-race during the race at all. It says don't alter the part. So the circumstances surrounding the time when they find it, I think won't stick. But is there anything out there for you guys how we played uh, kind of, you know, lawyer and attorney and defender? Do you think there's anything for Hendrick to bank on that any of these allegations or these uh, possible points will stick? You said this the other night. How many appeals have been successful to NASCAR? Zero. Zero. There will continue to be zero because <laughs> when you appeal to the person making the decision without a neutral and detached arbitrator, no, you're no, not, no, 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 no. That, you're, so there is there's a there is a panel that they appeal to. It is not NASCAR that makes the decision. Well, who selects they the do panel? The, well, that I I'm not really sure, but there is supposed to be right. a panel of people that don't actually aren't employed by NASCAR. Okay. Now, whether they were picked by NASCAR, I can't answer that for you, Joe. But supposedly, kind of like, like the NFL, there's supposed to be an independent panel that does not get paychecks from NASCAR. So now, I do want to get that out. I, I think I think the argument here, and and I think the strongest argument that that they could have is, and and you actually just said that you don't agree with this being the strongest argument. I think the the communication thing. I'm sure if NASCAR is assessing a penalty. They have clear communication that they've documented to say, don't touch these parts, no matter what Hendrick says. I think yeah. the only the only legitimate leg that Hendrick has to stand on as far as an appeal, which I don't believe will be successful, is the fact that it was found pre-race and it didn't alter the race outcome in any way. And I think that that is actually a, a great point. And I think that's probably where Hendrick needs to keep hitting on because at the end of the day, yeah, you found him coming off the car. My question is, why did they go to the Hendricks garage and say, hey, you mind if we give you a voluntary inspection? Will you, will, you, will you allow us to inspect your vehicle? 
I think maybe Hendrick, and I'm not trying to play conspiracy theorists, may have some more problems than they know what to do with, because that tells me that a little birdie was singing outside of its cage. So, you know, I, you know, I, I don't think any at NASCAR and the inspectors were like, you know what? I bet Hendrick's messing with them louvers. Let's go check it out without any prior notification that they were. So that's my thought on the subject. Steve? Steve? I I think basically if, Na if Hendrick felt that the louvers were not meeting specifications laid down in the rule book, they should have immediately taken the louvers to NASCAR and said, look, these aren't matching. Mm -hmm. This is This is... Uh, untouched factory, you know, single source part, and it's not matching what's in your in your rules book. And what do we do here? Do we alter this to the specific rules that are in the rules book and get it to conform, or do we make the modifications on our own, or, or what do we do? The do way I with, the way I we race with it as it's given to you. Yeah, I, th way I think the fault on on Andrick is they didn't go to NASCAR before inserting the louvers if they believe they were not meeting specifications according to the rule book. The fault on Hendrick is they didn't go to NASCAR and say, these aren't right. Somebody take a look at these. You know, we've got them in our car, but this is what came in the, in the cardboard box as a single source product, but they're not right. Mm -hmm. And we're going to run with them because it's what the single source supplier sent to us. But I'm telling you right now, I don't want to get in a post-race inspection and you tell me the louvers are wrong. Well, Steve, actually, I, th I think that that is really the, the whole argument of the statement that is being made is the fact that they did go to NASCAR and say, hey, these aren't right. And they're saying that NASCAR gave them inconsistent answers as to what to do. So if we're going to believe what Hendrick said, then I think absolutely – Hendrick went to NASCAR and was like, hey, these louvers aren't right. They don't meet specs. What can we do? And since they got an inconsistent area, they probably thought that they were working in a gray area. What do you think, Ryan? Uh, that's a bold move to make if you think you're working in a gray area with a single source part. So I, I agree. They, they played the lottery and lost. And I think what is probably more frustrating, at least with Hendrick, is they didn't need it to be altered because they obviously went to the single source part and then did really, really well against Phoenix. So it's one thing to say, I, I think these things are junk, and it's obviously a Chevy issue because Justin Haley of Colleg Racing did the same type of modification. Now, we don't know how they modify it. The only thing NASCAR said is these were clearly modified, but at the end of the day, Rick Kendrick probably goes to his team and said, who the hell did this? We didn't need this. We're still really, really fast. And to kind of give a little bit of clarity on this, Joe, for you, the only thing that I can give you insight on is that Jeff Gordon said the louvers played a huge role into the new short track aero package, road course aero package, and we saw that in the wind tunnel, and we were concerned that with the malfunction that they were having, it would set us back. That's the only thing I can tell you. So there was some type of science when it came to the wind tunnel that said, if we run it with what we have versus run it to what we, I think what they were trying to do is get it back to spec, at least that's their argument, then we're we're at a disadvantage. Chevy's at a disadvantage. Obviously, this is a Chevy issue because there's two Chevy teams that were penalized for it, not just one. So, And if it is a single source part, it's probably coming from someone at least related to Chevy, and they got hammered. So I think we have... Talked a lot about that. And one last thing, thank you, Denny Hamlin, for being a credible source because he said that he thought this would happen and he wasn't just saying it just to uh, get views or listens to his podcast. But that being said, he might have said this to get views or listens to his podcast because he got fined $50,000 and 25 driver points for admitting the fact that he wrecked into Ross Chastain and ruined Steve's chance at getting any more extra points into our NASCAR league. So that hurt those chances. That being said, do you think the penalty for Denny Hamlin was fair, the 25 driver points and the $50,000 for admitting that he just said, hell with it, I'm taking Ross Chastain out because I'm going down too? No, I don't. 
<laughs> and, and I'll tell you why. How many times did Ross Chastain get penalized last year for all the stupid shit he did on the track? Not once. So, you know what? If Denny Hamlin, if Denny Hamlin wanted to give him a little love tap at the end of the race, I think that's his prerogative. Somebody's going to have to fix that car. Somebody's going to have to put money into it. I think that's punishment enough. At the end of the day, that's absolutely ridiculous. NASCAR did that as much that they let go with on the track incidents and obvious obvious love taps that you you see between drivers all season and they don't do anything just just because you know he came out and admitted yeah that contact uh wasn't accidental at the end of in the last week's race to find him 25 drivers points i think for one it's a slap on the wrist it's it's just dumb and and two it's it's not consistent with what they've done steve steve um i agree with joe i i I, I, they had the uh, director of competition or director of rules or somebody from NASCAR on uh, Fox's uh, NASCAR show that they do a weekly or daily at night. And he said, we would not have fined Denny Stewart had we not heard him talk on the, on his podcast. He said that. He Denny said, Stewart? De uh, are, are you meaning to do that, Steve? Or are you having a stroke? What? He Denny said Denny Stewart. Stewart. Oh, Denny Stewart. Does that guy owe you money and he's on the back of your mind? <laughs> no, I had somebody from the IU show I did earlier was harping on Tony Stewart because we were promoting this show a little bit on, uh, and Mike and I were. Yeah, and, Steve uh, said we're too serious, Ryan. Run, oh, Denny God. Stewart, run. Uh, and I, he was talking about that NASCAR pissed away after Tony Stewart went away. So I've had Tony Stewart on my Denny Hamlin, the director of whoever for NASCAR said, the only reason Hamlin got fined was because they heard it on the podcast. I got issues now if you're going to start censorship, basically, on what a driver's saying. If they didn't catch it and make a, make a ruling after the race and charge him at the same time or whatever and say, hey, we're, you know, I don't know. I agree with Joe. Now, how easy is it for him that Denny Hamlin just say, well, that was complete bull crap. I was just doing it so no. people listen to my and show. say it in the most sarcastic way possible if I'm Denny Hamlin. Like, yeah. I, I, yeah. I think NASCAR, they just like, we don't want to, they literally are saying, we don't want to do this, just don't say it. And Denny Hamlin <laughs> is like, I have to say it. And that's the same thing. Like, that's to me uh -huh. when it comes to Josh Gordon. It's like, hey, Josh just don't smoke dope and you can make millions playing football. And he's like, I just can't not smoke dope. I'm sorry. I know. And like, it's, it's to me, it's easy to just not do that. But for some people, it's hard for them to not do that. So. It's almost like the biggest moral of the story here is Jeff Gordon and Denny Hamlin ought to keep their mouths shut. Because <laughs> you know what, Tony, no. Jeff comes out and says, you know, we're trying to remodify the louvers because they're not conforming. We're trying to get them back to conforming. You just admitted you screwed with a, a single source part. Right. And, and then it's now heavily on Hamlin now. comes out and says, yeah, I meant to hit him. Those guys need to take a media lesson and just say nothing. Yeah, they need to they need to watch the Dewey Cox story. You don't want no yeah. part of this, Dewey. Yeah, I think I do. <laughs> yeah, I think I do. <laughs> I mean, he literally could have said, you know, I don't know. It was out in the sun and, and the wheel just got real slick there. I, I started going up the track. I looked over and saw the one and I said, I need a little bit more. Cut. There's so many different entertaining ways he could have said it versus. Yeah, I was losing. Yeah, I just well, hit some. And not only that, he could have done. He could have, he could have got the same effect by denying it sarcastically. Like, yes. yeah, I, I didn't mean to hit him at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it was well, up to me, guidance, I would have hit him harder. The guidance, yeah. The guidance is some on my FedEx car. Like the airplanes went off course a little bit. Hell, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the dashboard charge... wasn't right. <laughs> yeah. For a brief second, my FedEx turned into a UPS and made a wrong turn. I made a know. wrong turn. <laughs> made a left turn. <laughs> yeah. So that, it is what it is. Uh, I think it, Denny Hamlin probably at least knows this that NASCAR's listening to his podcast. So he has something yeah, that, to that's take. That's the away good from thing that. that came out of it. Yeah. So that's the one. So, you and NASCAR. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's content. So the other thing that I want to talk about this last update before we go into the Atlanta race, and this was also from Denny Hamlin's podcast. So he's 
popular here on Stuck in the Catch Fence, at least off the track, not so much on it <laughs> as a favorite. But I talked to you guys about this off air, and one of the things when it comes to the cars now is the fact that they're not running as high at the end of their RPM as they were before. So Denny Hamlin said they used to run 9,300 RPM. Now they're running 9,000. Yeah, close to 9,000. And that's causing them to shift and it makes up for mistakes. And it's not been great for the short track product. And the question was, why are they doing that? And he said, well, it's to save money to use less engines for teams like Rick Ware Racing and BJ McLeod. So you guys can probably guess that I just started shaking like uncontrollably that the NASCAR product is being affected so that we can help Rick Ware Racing and BJ McLeod save money. Meanwhile, they're barely over points of Justin Haley, who has negative 40 points right now in the point standings. And that is not sarcasm because we just saw it. That's a bold strategy, I, Cotton. Let's see if it pays I off. Know that, I know NASCAR and OEMs want to save money. But, Ryan, by, but by at what point, I'm sorry, go ahead. At what point do you have to make the concession the product that we have needs to be greater than saving money because we will, in the long term, lose viewership, which we're seeing now, because the product is not nearly as good as we think it can be so that people like B.J. McLeod and Rick Ware Racing are able to save some dough. Yeah, I, th I think what, what we need to see uh, is a, a spec sheet given to these vehicles that say, this is your minimum requirement, this is your maximum requirement, or, or your maximum allowed of, of what whatever that may be, if that is uh, RPM output, horsepower output. So teams like Rick Ware can can come out and run their five laps and then get off the racetrack after Cody wrecks somebody. But I agree that teams like Hendricks and Gibbs, um, you know, and Childress, you know, the, the, the big teams and NASCAR that have money that are out there making money and selling sponsorships and putting the quality product on the racetrack every week should not be affected because Rick Ware doesn't have the money to compete in NASCAR. And that's, a, that's essentially what, what this is. We're allowing and nobody's Rick, tuning in to watch them yeah, either. Yeah. So. And, and that's, that's exactly the point too, Ryan, is if you ask, I, I bet, I bet, and we should do this. We should link up down in Atlanta and we okay. should walk around. We should do this and I'll try to do it and walk around and ask people what they think about JJ Yaley and Cody Ware and see how many faces we get. These are people at races that are going to go, who's that? You know, what number so, car do they drive? Yeah. What number car do they drive? Uh, I don't know. And, don't and, know and that's, the the, that's the point. Don't hold back the people that are driving this sport forward because you want to take care of uh, Rick Ware. Bless All right, you. Steve. Yeah, bless you. I Zoom apologize. Time. I took so, my microphone away. So at the end of the day, I think it's ridiculous. If, if you want to put something out, I wouldn't have any problem with this. Where NASCAR says this is the maximum that you're allowed. This is maximum horsepower. This is maximum RPM. This is the minimum. And if Rick Ware wants to save money, he could run at the minimum. But don't hold back Hendrick. Don't hold back Gibbs. And don't hold back Childress because Rick Ware wants to save money. Steve? Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%, Joe. I, the only thing I'm going to add to it is the comment I made two days ago when we did the uh, impromptu show. And, and that's it. It just will not happen. Um, NASCAR may want to consider paring down the number of cars that it, it starts the field with. They, they won't do that um, because there are people that cheer for Rick Ware and, and th 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 there are at least family members. Oh, okay. okay. JJ Yelly's <laughs> mom is really excited. I started I, searching. I, I, I said, I will find Waldo before I find him. So I'm going to start now. I, I think that, uh, I think that Rick has some, uh, Tupperware tubs with some T-shirts in it that he had printed up at Shirt Shack and sells them out of the back of his dad's pickup truck. Unconfirmed uh, source. Unconfirmed source. Jimmy Hoffa was a Rick Ware Racing fan. Well, he, that's okay. what I heard. I, I you know, I last yeah, famous I agree, words. I agree entirely with what Joe said. Um, and I, I at some point they may, they will not. But I take take ten cars out of the field and. 
you know, I don't know, go back to open qualifying. I, you know, th- that's not going to happen because NASCAR in their mind is making money. They're profitable. They're doing fine. I think the telltale time with NASCAR with all this changing is going to be what happens with the new TV contracts. If Fox and NBC are willing to pay the money they paid last time around. Go ahead, Joe. No, Steve, I got a question because you're an IndyCar guy, right? Yeah. Now, take take an Indy race, the, or the Indianapolis 500. Isn't right. there a minimum three-lap or four-lap speed that those cars have to meet to even make it into the race? No. And they used to qualify that way, though, right? Well, there used to be 100 cars trying to qualify. It, okay. but now, was... they, now, now the Penske pays probably four or five teams. Okay. So put a third car in. So, so, they can so get the 40, 40, 50 years ago, 100 yeah. cars come out. They had to maintain a minimum three or four lap speed to even, to even that was due qualify to, to qualify, correct? That was due to competition. You're right. Yeah, well, not due to a minimum speed set by the speedway. I And, so, and I understand that. But yeah. if you could take a page out of that book and say, listen, this is the minimum qualifying speed that you have to be at, or you're not even getting in the race, it doesn't matter. You know, if, if NASCAR can maybe think about something like that, maybe you can eliminate the the Rick Wares of the world, put an absolute trash out on the track because that's what he does. It's it they're they're filler cars to fill in the rest of the field, and and that's all anybody else is that's trying to qualify and can anyway. So you know, I I agree. I I think that at the end of the day, I think that the idea of having thirty six. Uh, Cars out there running laps is is what NASCAR wants. And I know sponsorship, obviously. You don't hardly ever see cars without sponsorship anymore in a cup race. Every once in a while. Right. Yeah. Every once in a while you well, do, but obviously sponsorship is not a problem. But at the yeah. end of the day, if it's going to diminish the competition and lead to things like, hey, we're going to take away RPMs and downgrade your horsepower, essentially, um, you're not you're not going to be around because we're not going to hold these other teams back. This is like no child left behind for NASCAR. Yeah, I think other than Daytona, every other race I think has had the 36 teams in it, which are the 36 teams that have the badges. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's been no non non badge team trying to qualify since Daytona. I I, I believe that's the case. Yeah, and kind the next one at, will be Coda. Yeah, Coda. Yeah, where they do they simply just have 36 teams. Um, and those are all guaranteed start, starting starting spots because they paid the big jack to get the the badge mm-hmm. that guarantees them a starting spot all season long, and that's probably how they're getting sponsorship on every car in NASCAR, except for some reason Gibbs couldn't get any sponsorship on Kyle Busch's car. You know, <laughs> they couldn't find the, 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 Cody Ware can get a sponsor, yeah. but Kyle Busch can't. Yeah, it's somehow that, Hendrick, a, a somehow Hendrick's a god because he found too. 27 of them. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I will say this. But Joe's maybe, right. Joe, Joe's exactly right. I, agree I will say so. maybe European sports do something right in one way that I think that other sports could take advantage of. In soccer, if you're a bottom three team – you are reduced down to the minor leagues. And I think that that is something that NASCAR, that every professional sport that takes itself seriously should try to implement because I have always applauded. Now the logistics of that are harder because I mean, JGR runs an Xfinity team. If they win the championship, they're not just going to automatically, you know, do that. But I, I will say this. If you are a bottom two or bottom three tier And we know charters are impossible to get right now. They are holding on to them like gold. If NASCAR said, you know what? You didn't have more than three races in the top 30 this year. We're going to allow your charter to open up, and you'll have to switch places with an Xfinity team if there's somebody out there to buy. Junior Motorsports, here's your chance. Do you want to pay the $20 million to get into NASCAR? Because Rick Ware has forfeited based on their inability to compete. If not... Rick Ware, you still able to keep your side? If so, sorry, you have to forfeit it because you did not live up to the expectations of what it is the Cup Series is. Because NASCAR is about beating and banging, rubbing his racing, and good finishes. And if we have more races like we do at Phoenix, we're going to keep getting on here and talking about the product suffering. And if the product is suffering due to freaking Rick, Rick Ware and BJ McClough, then we have a problem. A huge, huge problem. Because you're not saving money for engines to then lose money 
on viewership, attendance, merchandise, all these other things that the trickle down effect will happen. So I agree. And that was very well put, Ryan. I think I'm going to snip that out of this video and send that straight to straight to the friends Ware. family. Yeah. And Rick Ware and say, get the hell out yes. of NASCAR. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. You sour piece of no, but so now Joe and I will be headed yeah. to the ATL where we were hoping that it would be a lot warmer, but unfortunately it is not. So we are going to move to Atlanta. And the first thing we do, like we do before we start is talk about the points. Joe, last yeah. week you you gained, I'm looking out, five points to get to 17. Thank you. Steve, you gained two to get to 12. And your boy gained four to get to 13. So, Mama, we're out of the cellar. We're moving up in life. I get to go second. Joe, you're still in first, so it's up to you. Do you want to go first or last? Yeah, yeah I'll go first. Okay. Wait a minute. How did I only gain two? Didn't I have two drivers in the top uh, five? No. You, you had Alex Bowman, who gained you one point, and I erased it, but you had another driver. Um, you had Ross Chastain, who did not. Joey Logano, who did not. Keselowski. Uh, Keselowski, who did not. And I can't remember. I had Kyle Larson. I, I replaced Kyle... Uh, yeah, I had Kyle Larson. I don't remember seeing Kyle Larson. Oh, we got a text. On. Hey, Steve, if, if you did indeed, we will give you the Kyle Larson when we when we review the text. Well, oh, well, okay. Well, let me just – well, this is – what five drivers are you showing for me, Ryan? Well, I deleted it as I do everything. Oh, uh, here we go. Every, everything. Oh. I will, I, we have an appeals process that is not nearly as complicated as NASCAR. I will look at last week's video and see if I am incorrect. But I did write everybody's down last week and did it right before the show started. But due to a possible conflict, we will review the tape. Did you have William like Byron, me. Steve? Nobody had not, William Byron. Yeah, there's no possible way no, you could be had, me I right now. Bowman, so I still I have th the honor. I thought I had Bush, Bowman, his I think that's who it was. I think you had Bush. Somebody had Bush. I know you had Kyle Bowman, Bush. so I thought yeah, I had Bush, yeah. Bowman, Kozlowski, um, Logano. Everybody had Logano. Logano and Larson were my five. I will review the tape. Okay. I thought you had Chastain instead of Bowman. Oh, you know, I he did. I had Chastain in uh, Las Vegas. Uh, we'll see because I had it wrote. I had it wrote down because I know okay. you guys are. I may have. I know, Steve, I'll tell I you what, that... we're going to do a review process, and much like anything... Uh, I feel like Hendrick right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, so if we do do this... No, weighing heavily process, on your mind. If it's going to weigh this heavily on your mind, and we do indeed do the review process and find that you are giving us false information, I think you should be deducted two points. I, I have to file a formal appeal, and I'm going to rescind my opportunity to do a formal appeal. I will just eat it. Because I'm, Whatever. I'm sure, I'm sure the fact that, like we talked about earlier, the three people on the review board panel, the independent people, is you two, who are like joined at the hip. You're like step brothers, you know, John C. <laughs> Riley and uh, John C. Riley and Will Ferrell. So, yeah. So I don't think I have a rat's ass chance in hell. Did you just play my drum set? So yeah. <laughs> The only thing I'll say, Steve, is that I do charge for reviews one point. I'm so. not going to file. I'm not going to file an appeal. I'm not going to appeal. Oh, okay, it. okay. He's so going to hold this till he's going to hold this till the end of the season when I no, win again. No, no, no. And going to be that, like, no, hey, I'm not the guy. Back then when I, blah, blah. I'm not the guy because I missed two races that I have to get average points scored by everybody else. Yeah, whatever. To, you know, whatever to get me equal to everybody. Else. I just take anyway I bad picks. I am I am going to remain in the lead, and I'm going to take the honors. Yeah, this week yeah. I'm going to yeah. go with Kyle Larson for obvious reasons. Um, you know, I, I know this is super speedway style track, uh, but I got to take Kyle Larson. I'm also going to take uh, Kyle Busch again. Um, I think the last uh, two super speedways we saw Kyle Busch in, he was uh, he did pretty well, I'd say, Ryan. Um, as a matter of fact, almost heartbreaking, but almost heartbreaking, and should have won. And the other one, he did win. Ooh, this is going to be hard. 
Uh, I'm gonna take uh, I'm gonna take Brad Keselowski again for outside the top twenty. <laughs> Shout out to Brad. That, that, we gotta just eliminate that until yeah. we, we're we getting close. We're yeah. getting we, close. we are getting no, close. No, no, no. Here's what's gonna happen. Now that the points are all changed, and I told you we'd change after a quarter, all the freaking Hendrick cars are going to be below the 25. <laughs> they the will. <laughs> it's going to be a Hendrick sweep every week. I'm at, Only I'm at, Kendrick could F me on this. I'm at three, correct? Um, yes, sir. I feel like taking another Hendrick car this week, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go with JGR. I'm going to actually take Denny Hamlin this week. Okay. The that hamster. gives me. That gives me four, correct? Yes, sir. I'm going to blow your mind here. Give me Bubba. Oh, Ooh, okay. that's a good pick. Bubba does well. <laughs> yeah. That's not. And I don't even pick. like that guy. I would have never I guessed that you would have said that, but that's okay. okay. So, you want me to go? Yeah. yeah go. Let's just go ahead and assume that your appeal worked. No, 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 no. I think I think I I think you're right in who I took. I couldn't remember. Um, I'm going to go with Larson, with Kyle Busch, with um, Larson, Bush. I'm going to take Keselowski, and I've got two picks left, right? Yes, sir. I'm going to go with um, Chastain. And my my Bubba Wallace is going to be um, Ryan Blaney. Uh, I'm going to take Ryan Blaney. Wow, Blaney's won at that track before. You're right. Yeah, I, but I only not, say, not this configuration. Uh, I only no. say wow, Steve, because you're like a hybrid of me and Joe. So you got two picks for Joe, two picks of my own, which obviously is a bad omen. But last time we did that, somebody broke their leg. So, again, um, read, read, read back to me who you had me for. Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski, Ross Chastain, and Ryan Blaney. There you go. That's my five. Okay. All right. So, I have Kyle Busch. So, he is a clean sweep. Nobody will gain points off him. Ross Chastain. I will take that with Steve. I will take Ryan Blaney with Steve as well. Ooh. And the thing that I'm kind of shocked about is still getting hate. Two-time back-to-back Willie B, getting no love, who won this race last year. No. So I will take he William did. Byron. He did. He won and He won the second race, didn't he? He, run, he won the first one. I was there. He won the first one. Okay. I think Hamlin's going to take him out. I thought Chase Elliott won this race. Chase Elliott won one here last year, didn't he? He won the first one, I think, didn't he? The second one. I okay. was at the first one. The first one is the reason why I met you guys, at least when yeah. it came to talking NASCAR. Okay. Oh, okay. And then your guys' is Brad Keselowski is my boy Corey LaJoy. Stacking <laughs> pennies. Give it to him. Should have won last year until a late caution happened, at least in the second race. Ended up finishing fifth in that race. Or in the first race, he ended up wrecking because he tried to, uh, I believe it was Kyle Larson, block him. Boom, they both collided into the wall. So I'm going to go with Corey LaJoy. So, again, one last time. So whenever I look up this video, if we have any claims next week, Joe went Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski, Denny Hamlin, Bubba Wallace. Steve went Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski, Ross Chastain, Ryan Blaney. I went Kyle Busch, Ross Chastain, Ryan Blaney, Willie B, two-time Willie B, and Corey LaJoy. So those are our picks. If you would like to make picks, put them down in the comments. We'll make sure that we put them on there and see how you stack up against us. And your picks will be on text, so we will not have any alterations or possible um, appeals. No alterations. I'm not accusing anybody of alterations. So, no, not don't, don't not, accuse me of things I didn't. I'm, I'm not. I didn't planning. accuse you of anything, Steve. That is your conscience that is doing that, not me. I right. Not I probably you. made. I'm sure I made the wrong. I, I thought I had the wrong picks, so I'm sure it was on me. No, I'm saying that because it's in text, there should be zero opportunity for it to be appealed. That being said, if you enjoyed this show and our other shows, again, we were the first ones to talk about the Rick Hendrick possible penalties, and we got it exactly right. So make sure you tune in for that. That was a couple days ago where you can see us predict the future. And you can subscribe to the channel if you want to see us also try to predict the future coming up. 
We have a Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, feel free to do that. It'll be in the descriptions. Gentlemen, anything before the checkered flag? No, sir. See you in Atlanta. Steve? No, sir. You guys have a great time in Atlanta. That being said, a post-race show, not this week. We'll probably get to it on Monday because, again, us doing it while driving, probably not the safest thing to do on the interstate. Well, you'll be so, driving. I'll be in a camper. Driving and doing this show and Joe being drunk in his camper, probably not the best <laughs> thing to do. Maybe best for content, but not well, best Joe, for us. Joe, I thought you were going to the race. He, he's going to be staying in a camper Sunday. Well, I thought, isn't that his home? No, no, I don't live in my That's camper. Tough. That's a party. Sometimes shot. my sometimes my wife gets pissed off at me and she's, she's like, hey, go camper. to the camper. But <laughs> I, I live in a camper I down by the street. I typically don't live out there. We're out of here. It's getting deep.